This is Twit. All right. It's time to talk a little bit about crypto mining. Uh, no, we're not going to help you get rich uh, with Bitcoin, but we are going to maybe heat up your room or maybe your chicken coop. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> crypto mining PCs actually put off a ton of heat, uh, enough heat to grow tomatoes, as we're about to find out. Joining us to talk about the heat that he created is Thomas Smith, CEO of Gato Images, who's been writing about his journey around taking the heat and the energy used by crypto mining machines and kind of diverting that in really creative ways. Welcome back to the show, Tom. Thank you for having me. Really happy to be here. Yeah, it's good to get you back. And uh, I, I love, uh, I wasn't aware that you were going down this road. You, you contacted us and said, hey, check out what I've been doing. And then when I started to kind of read into it, this has been a project that you've been working on for a while, at least a year. Actually, I think your initial blog post or your initial post uh, on Medium was almost exactly a year ago where you were kind of like spitballing ideas around what you would do here. <laughs> so, um, so before all that, what came first, the desire to garden or the desire to crypto mine? <laughs> I think the desire to garden, really. Um, yeah. So as I shared in the piece, uh, my, my three-year-old son got really into gardening uh, over the last summer. And I'm a terrible gardener. I kill plants. Um, I have no you know, knowledge or skill there whatsoever. So it was kind of a challenge. I was like, well, we want to encourage this, but, you know, how can I do that? Um, and, you know, I realized what I can do is tech um, and I can, you know, bring in all these tech concepts. So starting in January, around January of um, 2020, you know, right before the pandemic, we started building this um, garden in our garage. And we, I thought, you know, bring in all these tech concepts, we'll build a hydroponic system, um, we'll experiment with different kinds of solar power and, you know, recycled water and that kind of thing. And we set up a garden. Um, obviously, the timing was great uh, because, you know, we, we were able to use this all through the pandemic. Um, and it was a great project, but, you know, I realized, okay, it's the dead of winter. It's the middle of February, you know, by the time we had this thing up and running and, you know, even here in California, it gets into the forties at night, sometimes down to the thirties. So it was chilly and tomatoes really need to be at a pretty high temperature. It's what we're growing, um, you know, to, to thrive. So I started to think, well, it's a tech oriented way that we can, um, heat this little greenhouse that we built. And what I kind of arrived at was, um, you know, let's build a cryptocurrency mining computer. Um, let's run it at full blast and let's pipe the heat from it into the greenhouse and uh, use that to grow our tomatoes. So we did. And uh, as I shared in the story, it actually worked really well. <laughs> So, okay, so you you built this crypto mining PC. Uh, talk a little bit about the technology components that went into that. How how exactly did you build that? What were, I mean, are you using like a Raspberry Pi, something uh, stronger or uh, beefier than that? Or are you using? Yeah, I just, so I got a, um, uh, you know, custom computer kit. I think it was from Newegg. Um, and I put in an NVIDIA 1070 graphics card, uh, which is one of the sort of standards at the time. And I think people still are using them for crypto mining. Um, just a pretty basic motherboard connected up to that. Um, and then, you know, pretty, pretty simple just a, a network card. And I've experimented with a couple of different, um, you know, systems to do the mining, using some algorithms directly, joining mining pools. Uh, I ended up using the software NiceHash though, um, which is sort of, you know, uh, really easy. You just start it up, you press a button and, uh, and it starts mining for you. And, nice. um, I ended up, uh, yeah, experimenting a little bit with underclocking and overclocking that NVIDIA graphics card to dial in the, uh, the balance between how much power I was using and how much heat I was pumping out into the greenhouse. And not only did you grow tomatoes, uh, you're, I mean, I, it must have been an evolution. At some point, you're now you're heating a chicken coop, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, so yeah, started out with the tomatoes, um, and then recently moved into a new house. Um, and one of the other things we did over the pandemic uh, was to get chickens. And um, the time this was, I think, May of 2020. We thought we were being so brilliant and creative, and you know, original and getting chickens. <laughs> Apparently, backyard chicken ownership increased 500 percent um, during the pandemic. So we were not alone in uh, in doing that. But, um, yeah, you can see my chickens, Anna and Elsa there. Um, and we got a, a new house, moved them into a shed in the backyard. And again, you know, same issue. It's uh, it's winter again. It's chilly. And I thought, uh, 
you know, hey, why not take that same PC that we used for our little garden and uh, put it out in the chicken shed, connect it up. And as you can see, the chickens actually love to hang out with it. Um, it's, you know, putting out a lot of heat. So that's, that's fantastic. Uh, my chicken, Anna, hanging out and, uh, you know, supervising our mining operation there. Anna and Elsa, the chickens, I'm assuming named by your, by your kids. Uh, Absolutely. But maybe not. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, what are we going to name the chickens? Of course, Anna and Elsa. Um, is that is that bad for the hardware, leaving it exposed like that in a chicken coop? I just have to imagine it's going to get feathers. super dirty. And, yeah, feathers. Yeah. So that's the thing. I mean, they um, I actually, you know, I've had to take it out a couple of times um, because they they like to hang out with it. And they also are drawn to little LEDs and lights and things. So they haven't managed to knock the PC over, um, but I put a Nest camera in there and uh, I've come back several times and found that they've completely destroyed it. So uh, maybe they don't like the surveillance aspects or they have some privacy (laughs) concerns, but I often come back in the morning and uh, I think they they uh, see the little light and attack it. So we end up <laughs> with a broken nest camera on the floor of the poop. A nest in the nest. I'm exactly. sorry. I have to say it. <laughs> oh, go. wow. This is, I love just like a chicken foreman who's looking over the, or I should say four person, uh, who's looking over the mining operation. It's just delightful. Um, you talked about the simple, Simplicity. You 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 know downloaded this program and you clicked a button and and that kind of worked for you. But then you started talking about overclocking and things like that. Um, obviously, this this takes a lot of research. I think one of the things that can be helpful if people are kind of wanting to get into this, where where did you start in terms of knowing, okay, this is the graphics card that I need to get. These are the applications that are out there. Is this just research that you compiled on your own? Was there, you know, someone who went out before you and was doing this and you were able to kind of follow along? How did you come up in the end with the mining operation that you have in place now? It was a lot of, you know, just reading things online, um, you know, watching YouTube videos, uh, I just recently actually, though, summarized uh, the mining aspects of, uh, of what I did in an article on debugger, debugger.medium.com, where I write. Um, and I, uh, I just did an article, a new series I'm doing called Tech Shortcuts for Life. And it's these sort of simple, um, you know, things you can do to, uh, to use tech in your life. So I looked at, you know, if you've never mined Bitcoin before, if you have no idea what a blockchain is, how can you kind of experiment with these technologies? And you probably don't want to start out by building a, uh, you know, a cryptocurrency chicken coop, um, but maybe you just want to, you know, kind of dip a, a toe in and um, get some hands-on experience with the, these kinds of technologies. So I, I wrote up, um, you know, kind of the resources that I turned to, the software that I used, um, next steps. You know, if you um, download a program like NiceHash, start it up, and you say, well, this is really cool. You know, I want to explore it more. Um, there's other tools you can get like MSI Afterburner for doing underclocking or overclocking. Um, and, uh, you know, you can obviously start to do more custom builds and adding graphics cards and getting motherboards that can accommodate 10 or, or more graphics cards. Um, so I tried to share all those resources and just summarize them in a way that people can step through the process from, you know, I've never, never actually worked with these before. Uh, I want to press one button and start mining all the way up to, you know, I want to buy an ASIC machine and I want to get, you know, dedicated hardware and, uh, and really go into this in a lot more depth. So obviously this is more sustainable than, uh, than like having a, a Bitcoin mining system, you know, inside of an enclosed closet or something like stashed away, right? Like there you're just burning energy to mine crypto. Here you're burning energy, yes, but you're also, you know, growing actual living things, plants, animals, that sort of thing. So there's a sustainable um, aspect to it. But talk a little bit about the environmental cost just in general about Bitcoin mining machines, because I've seen they're actually quite costly as far as that's concerned. They take so much energy to power themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's a I think it's a huge challenge um, with cryptocurrencies in general, because, yeah, when the I mean, when my computer was mining, it would use over 200 watts of power just to run that graphics card. And I was doing it still on a really small scale. I mean, this was at the time generating about 75 cents per day in mining revenue um, with the sort of run up in crypto. It's now up to about maybe a dollar thirty, a dollar fifty. So it's still a really small scale. And even then, it's using a couple hundred watts, and it's putting out um, all of that energy as heat. So it's really, um, you know, it, I figured out when I put it into my greenhouse, if I piped all of the heat in 
it would actually raise the temperature by about 40 degrees and cook my tomatoes. So I had to come up with a way to, oh, wow. uh, to modulate it. So that's the kind of heat you're dealing with. And when you scale that up to the overall scale of, um, you know, a, a network like for Bitcoin, it uses more power than many countries at this point, more power than the country of Switzerland. And, um, you know, with the, the run up in pricing and more people getting into it, they say it now uses um, as much power as a, a country with about, uh, I think, 200 million uh, citizens. So it's a, a huge environmental cost. And one of the things that I also looked at was, can you mine crypto using solar power? Um, and that's one of the things where I'm really starting to explore it more and um, and looking at putting some solar panels on top of that chicken shed, um, using the uh, the energy from that to charge batteries and to run the cryptocurrency mining computer that's heating that space um, over over uh, the daytime, using the batteries to run it at night and actually running the whole thing on solar so that we're not you know contributing to the environmental footprint. And I think that's something that could work. Uh, at a very small scale with what I'm doing, but I think it could also work at a much larger scale, either for homeowners that have solar panels on their home already and they're not using all the capacity, or even for these sort of larger commercial um, solar operations.